Hello and welcome to an introduction video of, of the video series that I'll be doing um, next week. It's about painting um, train cases. And so I feel like I could probably wrap this up in a couple of videos, but I'm going to do several, um, probably about five videos through next week and just kind of do like a DIY with you. So, um, so this one was has, is a work in progress. I've just been working on it. As you can tell, it has lots of different um, designs written on it. I really wanted. Oops, I got a button stuck in there. I really wanted to make it um, kind of an artsy, um, a, a one I could travel with that I could keep my paints in, and and just different things that inspire me to write and to paint. But what I noticed with this one is my class will not stay shut like I have to kind of push it and I don't have a key to it and so what scares me about this one is if I'm actually have it filled with paint it might pop open and then I could have a mess so I'm gonna paint another one with the same idea in mind um, but this one I think what I'll do is it's definitely cute so I'm gonna definitely keep it on my desk and what I'll probably do is leave it popped open I'm in the process of still decorating the inside of it, so um, it's not yet complete. But I've been making these little paper dolls in here. If you watch on Instagram, you would see, um, let's see if you can see. I'm going to move it up just a little bit. You'll see my messy dust, too. But you can see that I've been painting little uh, characters and putting them in there. And um, these I won't glue down or anything, but they're, they're going to just kind of sit in here for now. And um, this one I actually made a little bit taller um, than what I had intended on it. But as you can see, um, this is actually napkins and tissue paper and paint, some cardstock. I've got my Alice journal in there. This is um, di uh, these are little post-it notes, some more cardstock and tissue paper. So um, this is a work in progress. And, I, and a lot of times with the train cases, they end up being kind of like where I can add different things throughout um, throughout as I get them completed because they are a, um, they are a project. Um, and so um, a lot of times what you'll realize too is the inside of train cases can look really bad. I mean, they can be kind of yucky and stink and... Um, not sure what to do with them so a lot of times um, I had that question come up about how I get the smell out what I do is I'll spray with Lysol and then I put dryer sheets in here so I'll just place the dryer sheets in here shut it up and sometimes it takes a little while to get that smell out like this one definitely had that musty smell um, but what I did was once I added um, where I got it tolerable um, I painted the inside and then I started adding tissue paper and that really helped seal that um, smell as well. So so these are super fun. Another thing you can do on the inside is add material to the inside of it. I've bought material before and I'm going to use that spray glue but in this series I'm going to be showing you how, um, how I'm going to be doing the um, just using the tissue paper. Now I wanted to show you another one that I worked on. And again, I'm going to adjust my camera here, make sure I can get it full in the picture. This is the train case that I took take with me when I go glamping. And typically, we I go glamping with crafty destinations at the glamping inn. But um, I love setting this out of my uh, camper or my tent, whatever I'll be using. But I carry all my supplies in here. And actually... Um, this past couple weeks, I went and saw my sister, and she is out at the lake, and so I um, I took it with me, and I carried all my art supplies in there, and all the stuff that I wanted to work on during that time. So, with this one, it's actually a smaller suitcase, which is adorable. That one on my desk is um, also small, but it... Um, this one I got really fortunate to have the inside in such excellent condition. So you can tell it didn't have any tears in it. So it has a mess on all my glitter, which I don't mind because that means I've had fun stuff in there. But now at the, the top of here, I think I had a space for a mirror, but um, it didn't come with it. Sometimes they Velcro in and, or, and sometimes they're really stuck in there and sometimes they're not. But I made a little pocket here because I when I go places, I change up my little... Um, 
postcard or I put different things in there but basically I just covered this with vintage um, lace um, doilies and some of these weren't completed and then I just added an assortment of different flowers that I picked up um, from Hobby Lobby. I think these little tool balls were from a garland that I had but I just glued those around there and kind of made um, the inside and that's definitely my style. I definitely like to do that um, so that may be something I end up doing on the other one as well but I think it's more, more or less going to be paper because um, um, that's just the style I was going with that one. So, oh, and then what's really fun is now, and then if you're looking for these, just keep in mind that, um, that these are, you know, just make sure they clasp really well. That's always been kind of an issue. And then this is a little, um, cute little tassel that I always keep on mine. Um, this was from Posh Pieces. So let me show you the one I'm going to be doing, um, with this with this uh, journal, I mean with this series. This is a really interesting one I've had for a while. It's very old. Um, I don't even know where I picked it up. Very. I wanted to make sure this, I don't want to get down into creating it and then, because I really want one I can carry with me um, that's this style uh, that I can take with me on to when I go and do little journal uh, events and things like that. This is like a, it's all, it's almost made out of all paper. It's a little bit different than the other style. Um, it did have a mirror in here, but I think, oh, here it is. It's in the very bottom. I knew I had it. So it's, it's, it's in the bottom. I have a bunch of just junk in here, you guys. Cards, you know, ribbon, material. Um, because I do keep some of this for storage, but with this one in particular, I was, it was junky. But the mirror is basically kind of stuck on the bottom here. Let's see if I can get it out. Yeah, so um, I may keep this. I may not. It's It goes right in here like that. Actually, I kind of like it in there. So I might have to use some E6000 and put it back in there, and then I can decorate around. But um, I'll be adding just the same as I did with the other one, uh, paper um, to the inside of this one, and, um, and also doing designs on the outside. Again, I hope this... I'll probably play around with this a little bit, make sure that it is going to keep latched because I want one that I can carry with me onto trips. Um, or, you know, trips to your desk in the living room. So, <laughs> uh, so this is what we're going to, what I was going to kind of go over real quickly. Um, w when you do watch this video, I have a um, list of items I'm going to go over on my. Um, on uh, my blog so you can go there and check out it check out what is um, what is what I'm going to be using so first thing we're going to do is we're going to cover it with gesso so I bought this um, basically um, they had it on sale I'm going to kind of move this down just a little bit here um, they had this one on sale at Hobby Lobby a while back so I just bought it it's not a really thick gesso um, so I may this is the same stuff. But it just seems like, I think maybe this may have been older gesso or something like that. Um, so it kind of got a little bit thicker. But um, this is what I'll be using to cover mine up. And what gesso basically does is it just kind of prepares the surface for when you do add paint. Um, it, it puts, I've, I've had people use um, white paint, but for projects like this that I really want the paint to stick, I use gesso because it kind of prepares the surface. Then I'm going to be using acrylic paints. So uh, you can buy a lot of these craft paints. You can use these. Um, my favorite are, I like the Delta and I like the Americana are the typical colors that I go with. Um, although I've bought a set from, I think I bought them at Walmart, this folk art. And it has this particular, it's multi-surface. This has been really good coverage. So I know a lot of times when you buy craft paint, it's it's real thin, so you'll run into problems where you have to put layers. Um, so I and you can buy a whole set of these at Walmart um, for pretty inexpensive. But they have this little symbol on the top, and they're called a multi uh, multi surface. And these have been very um, very ha I've been very happy with these for painting. Um, especially when you're going to be painting a lot of surface um, and that is a different other than 
paper or um, canvas. So if you haven't bought paints, again, any acrylic will work, but this is definitely one that I really like. And the other thing is, is that I, I bought a big tube of white. One, I'm taking a class that she uses a lot of white. I'm in, or I'm in God, God Made Girl Club, and I'm going to be using a lot of white because I have learned that I really love mixing white um, with my paints. Um, so that's going to be something also. Uh, I mentioned paint brushes, so I'm going to have like a flat, I said a large paint brush um, for covering the surface. And basically I use a flat, um, pretty large flat paint brush. You can also, um, you know, the sponges you know sometimes work sometimes I feel like that wastes a lot of paint um, but the sponge you know the things with the sponges but just get you a, if you don't have them I buy um, some of these I'll just buy in the big container um, a um, a set of these you can buy them at any craft store um, and they just come with a variety but basically you want one that is going to be able to cover large surfaces um, fairly quickly so I'll, I'll have a large paintbrush and then I have an assortment of different paintbrushes. I love a rounded tip paintbrush, so I'll be using those. Um, I do use some sort of flat. Like I said, just if you have an assortment of paintbrushes, you're going to need some fine tip for details. So I would just have a variety of different sizes paintbrushes for um, for your projects. See, here's a big wide one. I think that came in a kit, um, but it's you know very good to cover. And then. Um, rounded and then some fine ones for the details and again it depends be thinking about what you want to do for your design if you want to do a camper if you want to do um, writing flowers I thought about doing flowers on this one um, so just kind of keep that in mind when you um, for the size of paint brushes if you do a lot of big flowers um, and things where you're not going to need a lot of detail you may not need the thin markers but if you're going to be doing face I'm like no sorry not markers but paint brushes if you're going to be doing faces you may need uh, more or less the um, paint brushes so once we get the paint down um, we're going to um, move to the inside so we're going to paint the surface and then once we come to the inside of it um, as I mentioned before start looking at tissue paper and this can all be stuff you have in the house tissue paper cardstock now when I do cardstock in here, um, I kind of like to do one-sided cardstock. Two-sided does work, but like the Cartabella, the real thick, it, if you're just kind of doing a surface, because I'm going to be layering. So not only will I be putting a surface down of cardstock, but I'll also be um, adding more more onto the top of it. That's why I kind of like doing paint and then adding tissue paper and thinner um, pieces of um, uh, cardstock, like the one-sided, almost kind of like copy paper you know um, so basically we're going to be covering the inside of this and this is where you get to I mean you're going to be making it your own anyway but this is where you can add little gems in here you can add little flat backs you can have pom-poms trims um, I've mentioned all of that in the list uh, so it's really how you want to decorate and I'll show you what I'm going to be doing and so maybe get you some ideas um, I, over here, I'm going to show you real quick. I know my desk is a mess, but it, don't mind the mess, you guys, seriously. You know, I think we're all crafters, so we know. But I'm going to zoom in a little bit. But as you can tell, I have a huge mess over here. But this is another one that I did. And again, you can see I did the vintage lace on there with the, with the florals. So I have some pearls over there. So it's definitely oops, something you can use um, as your style. Also, keep in mind you can use cardstock. I mean, uh, sorry, M M you can use hymnal pages. You can use uh, book page. Oh, that may be actually really good because I'm really wanting to do this like as a writing thing too. So maybe like some book pages of an art, uh, a writer that you like, and an old book. You can use um, if you want to make it real whimsical and childlike. You could do book pages from your from a little golden book so there's so many options it's basically mod podging you know we're all familiar with that so that's gonna be the inside now let me talk about glue real quick here so these are the glues that I have that I use this is a liquid X um, matte medium you can, oops let me go down 
so you can see what I'm talking about here. Um, this is a matte medium, and it is um, um, very good with tissue paper, with napkins, with paper. I really like this. It's very thin. It goes on easily. It's very workable with. Um, I also like this. This is my go-to. This is I've been using this for probably five years or more. Um, actually, ever since I've been doing um, uh, paintings and things like that, I've used this because I use a lot of papers um, to as a surface to um, the art pieces. So this one, though, um, the reason if you were to choose between both of these, I do love these. This one will work because this what what we're going to do with this one. And I, I'm going to leave a link. I hope that it's on Amazon. Um, this is where I bought it. And actually, I've bought really big ones. But I'm going to put a coat down on top of once we get the whole thing painted. We're going to use this also as a top sealant. Um, it isn't decoupage. You know how you can buy the decoupage? and Because um, that can kind of leave things sticky. This is really good. Now, I did a trial on this right here. On this one. Because I wanted to see, like I did a, um, I did the, just the matte, the me matte medium, the liquid X matte medium, and then I did, um, my favorite, which is Tracy Bautista, Bautista, anyway, I'm, like I said, I'll leave a link, I, that's where I bought it from Amazon, so I hope they still have it, um, and, and, it, and even though I feel in it, this one is a lot thicker. It kind of leaves a more sealant. Now, one thing I do notice, too, it's not going to be sticky. I don't, I've never had any problems. I have canvases stacked on top of each other and have never had any problems with them sticking together, unlike the, um, the, day, the, the regular old Mod Podge stuff. So this is, um, and I don't think you would have any problems with this as either, and this would work, too. So I'm going to leave a link to both of these. This can be bought at Hobby Lobby. So if this isn't available, um, then this would work just as well, too. Um, it probably dries a lot quicker because it's not as thick either. So that's going to be sealing it. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to be listing this glue. Um, I got turned on to this glue. This is fabulous when you're adding um, uh, like ribbons and things like that um, because it's a, it is a quick grab. And I've been using this in my journals, um, but I took a... We did an online um, class during the summer, um, and that she um, chipped in time, introduced me to this, and it's fab. It's fabulous. This fabric fix is fabulous. Uh, <laughs> so that that I'm going to be using, um, and then also also you can use hot glue. Hot glue will work too because that's what I've used before to attach all those. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of, if I think of anything else, I'll, I'll post it. Um, but like I said, this is going to be pretty basic supplies. Um, and then the inside's just going to really be um, up to you on, on the colors that you use, your color palette that you have in mind for yours. So be thinking about um, ideas of what you want to paint. And I am so looking forward to this class and really excited about it. Um, and of course get you some glitter some glitter glue I could go on and on about all the fun things that you can add to these to make them personalized and your own so all right you guys well I'm looking forward to it and um, we'll see you on Monday